Hello and welcome to our next Film on Studio. Uh, we have a special guest today who is Bashik Matias. Uh, he's a head of uh, Center for Research on Cryptography and Security uh, on Masaryk University, university that cooperates with Film on. Hi Bashik, welcome. Pleasure to be here. And pleasure to have you here. Uh, Bashik is specialized and his uh, team are specializing on uh, research on RSA keys and cryptography and you, went, you, you made a, a big breakthrough uh, these years. But before we get to what happened and what vulnerability that is affecting every, you know, globally millions of people, uh, let's talk about how you started in this, in this area. What was the reason to start the research? Yeah, I mean looking back, it's time about three, four years back, we were going through the source codes of several libraries generating RSA keys. And we noticed uh, patterns, different patterns in different libraries. Because if you look at the theory of RSA, it's nice and crisp, but basically the theory says you must find a prime. And if the number that you find is not a prime, if theoretically you should throw it away mm -hmm. and go for a completely new search. Mm -hmm. However, that's not effective. So many inventors, many companies, figured out different ways how to go with the initial search. If I figure out that the number that I have is not working for me, I just don't throw it away. I do some manipulation with it and I'm looking and working still with the number that I generated before. Mm -hmm. And looking at these and various other optimizations, I would say, of RSA, because RSA has been around for well over 40 years. So people figured out various tricks because RSA and general asymmetric cryptography is computationally demanding. So people figure out various tricks how to make them work faster, including generation of keys. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at these libraries and figured out that, hey, uh, it's not just random uh, numbers that we see here. If we look at public keys, public RSA keys, uh, we can maybe tell whether a certain number of keys is coming from library A, another batch of keys is coming from library B, and another batch of keys is coming maybe from a smart card C. Mm -hmm. And with this theory, we started about two or three years back, a significant harvesting effort, generating, I mean, we have been doing research on smart card security for well over a decade, so generating millions of keys with our smart cards, getting them from whatever sources we were able to get them from. Later on, and we published the results on this, uh, this year as well, looking into the crawls over the SSL or TLS traffic and many other sources. And when we went and when we started studying the RSA keys, there was a publication at Usenix Security 2016, one year ago, we basically said, well, hey, look at this. We have a method to fingerprint RSA keys. We can look at RSA keys and tell what source they come from with certain probability. Mm -hmm. So we can definitely tell that we have this particular key and with probability well over 90% is coming from, say, OpenSSL mm -hmm. and probability of it coming from two other potential sources is there, but it's rather low. Mm -hmm. And we developed a tool and the tool is publicly available and it's uh, coming also with an, an open web interface where you can put your public RSA keys and we will tell you, based on our research, what we think is the source of your RSA keys. Mm -hmm. So we basically told people, look, there is a method to fingerprint RSA keys. And this on its own has got perfectly uh, wide uh, applicability because then researchers who want to, for example, track whether their uh, cloud service provider who is charging them some extra money for providing some additional service, hardware security modules and things like that for security, do they already provide the service they are paid for? Mm -hmm. You do not have to check them physically. You look at the RSA keys that they generate and you can tell, yes, this provider within the month we monitor them, 28 days did what they are committed to do and what they signed the contract for. But well, look, there were two days where they did not use the HSM, but they basically were generating the keys using OpenSSL software library. 
So, so you're effectively chasing uh, vendors and people who... Uh, we provided a tool for it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, our, our research question was, if uh, it's a general question uh, uh, which we are actually addressing with various research projects, if we see an output of a cryptographic function, can we tell whether this is a good output? If not, what's bad about this output? Can we differentiate it? Because for certain uh, cryptographic functions, the output that they provide, provided that you don't know the key and so on and so forth, should look statistically random. Mm -hmm. And we are developing tools that, they, uh, that, they, uh, that tell you not only whether it's possibly not random, mm -hmm. but also what patterns are in there. Mm -hmm. And this RSA uh, key research was a small part within this, and we developed a tool that can tell you where the, your RSA key came from. And the tool is publicly available, right? So we can link, uh, we yeah, can yeah. share the link the in the link description. Is available and the service is used by, by thousands of people. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then there was like 2016, and we have been checking these uh, sources and the keys, and we actually saw that there is one very, very intriguing pattern mm -hmm. that we then uh, yeah, sure. pinpointed to uh, the particular family of chips from Infineon, mm -hmm. where we said, hey, look at this, this really is looking very weird. I mean, the other patterns are there, you can tell where the key comes from, but this was looking really strange. And while investigating why it looks this strange, we reverse engineered the method, later confirmed by Infineon engineers, that it was correct, uh, reverse engineering, uh, that was generating the keys, and not only that it was generating the keys in the very weird pattern, but we also uh, found that there is a weakness uh, allowing uh, an attacker to uh, calculate or to brute force RSA keys in the lengths that were not imaginable with common hardware mm -hmm. uh, this year, 2017. So you, you're telling me that uh, some security companies, due to efficiency or maybe price, um, financial uh, reasons they yeah, the, the didn't reason, provide the, the yeah. level of security expected. The reason here was simple. Infineon wanted to save 50% or, or upgrade the performance by 50% because wow. generation of RSA keys is a demanding effort. Mm -hmm. So they figured out this method which on its own was actually clever but mm -hmm. it contained this weakness. Mm -hmm. And what we have a serious, I would say, philosophical problem with is that if such a weakness comes in an implementation. The implementation then, from the point of formal certification in security, is then certified in this case by the German BSI. Mm -hmm. They get the certificates and everything so that they can sell for particle sensitive uh, customers. BSI is, and actually all certification uh, authorities, are awarding extra points for the certification if your design is secret. Mm -hmm. So they are rewarding security by obscurity mm -hmm. that we know for decades does not really work. Mm -hmm. And here is, it is a perfect example. If this method was not secret, mm -hmm. people would have discovered it mm -hmm. uh, probably a few years after the release of the products. We actually figured out that so far the earliest product where this poor generation was implemented was from 2007. Mm -hmm. okay. So for nearly 10 years they have been using this approach. Affecting dozens of millions, uh, hundreds of millions of... Probably, I would say, hundreds of millions, if not billions of customers. And if the source code was available, it's quite possible, I would say it's likely, that this has been found some, by somebody else before us. But because the certification requires this design to be secret, it gets implemented in hundreds of millions, at least, it probably will be billions of imp hardware implementations, mm -hmm. and those then you have to replace. So somebody will have to go around customers who have now TPMs, patch their code. So you have seen in uh, September, Microsoft, Google, whomever you name, 
used uh, our advice to provide patches for TPMs because at least from the sample that we, we investigated uh, several dozen uh, laptops and we found about 25% of them contained TPMs with this vulnerable chip. Wow. If we speak of uh, electronic IDs, it's already uh, tens of millions. Mm -hmm. I mean, Spain, uh, not everything is on the smart card, but Spain uh, had to revoke 60 million uh, public key certificates. But coming back to the issue, mm -hmm. we did this research. We informed Infineon in uh, the very end of January or maybe early February this year. 2017. 2017. And we told them, yes, we understand this is an issue, especially because it's in hardware. So instead of uh, giving you the usual time of three to six months, we basically give you nine months to rectify this. We work with them, uh, showing our hypothesis, which they confirmed to be correct. We provided them with some free consultancy on uh, improvements or check of the improvements. And we expected that, uh, or we were told that their customers will be informed mm -hmm. because we knew that uh, when we did the research, we knew that Estonia is definitely using chips for their electronic IDs mm -hmm. with this vulnerable uh, uh, RSA key generation. Mm -hmm. And we were expecting that there will be more countries than just Estonia. Mm -hmm. We were uh, working with Infineon, then we sent the publication for the conference that had the day of appearance. Uh, early November this year and to our surprise end of August early September we found out that Estonia is still generating the keys and putting them on their citizens IDs mm -hmm. then we figured out that some countries were not informed mm -hmm. not there was not flow of Infineon but it was uh, basically the uh, vendor that was providing to the Estonian government mm -hmm. Uh, did not pass the information on. Mm -hmm. Later on, we learned that other governments like Slovakia got very incomplete and very uh, general information about which they basically said, okay, this sounds very theoretical, let's not bother with this, and they, they skipped uh, further investigation. So in September and October, updates came, releases came. We provided some initial information about this by mid-October. And then we have seen the, the effort building up in the governments of Estonia, Slovakia. We had discussions with people from the intelligence services, whether for uh, some sake we are not uh, agents of the Russian government uh, trying to ruin Estonian elections and the general e-card system. And now we see Spain uh, revoking their card, so the impact is very broad. So would you, would you think it's a small cybersecurity diesel gate? <laughs> uh, in a way it is. Uh, in a way it's uh, helpful because it's one of the first uh, discoveries of a security flaw with such an impact. So far the impact has been maybe millions of in instances. But now we are going one or actually two orders higher. Mm -hmm. And we see, and this was a very useful exercise for national governments like Estonia, like Slovakia, mm -hmm. that uh, if you want to cut cost on using electronic services, not only you have to provide some security, but you have to understand that even if the electronic services reduce the costs of the operations of whatever support they are providing for, you still have to have uh, measures in place so that you can react if the security does not work. Mm -hmm. Because at some point, everything can stop. Mm -hmm. Maybe it will be milliseconds, maybe things will not work for days, maybe you will have to come with a card and change some um, uh, part of it. But what was the big discovery was that the logistics was poor. Mm -hmm. The logistics of, okay, what we will do now with similar discovery of this kind, how can we uh, rectify this and how we can establish new level of security or, or renewed level of security, this was not existent in uh, terms of the government services, at least not in Estonia and Slovakia. 
And please remind me, I know that you received some prestigious award for, for this work, right? Yeah, yeah, we got, uh, we presented it at uh, another, the top three system security conferences, uh, ACM uh, CCS this year, and we got the uh, Real Impact Award uh, that was awarded first time this year for mm -hmm. this discovery, together with Craig. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think Craig was everywhere in media and uh, uh, crack was a, a big thing, but still may affecting probably the same number of people. But we're talking about home Wi-Fi rise and 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 usually small um, access points in the and in, in, in these devices, and the impact might not be as big as someone being able to to pretend to be you and get a new license and passport. And number of devices impacted, the the impact was comparable. Mm -hmm. But then to rectify against uh, Craig is much easier than against Roca because with Roca in many instances you really have to throw away the hardware. Mm -hmm. If the generation is in the firmware of the chip mm -hmm. and it's the only cryptographic met method for asymmetric cryptography that the chip is working for, mm -hmm. then you can throw the chip away. Wow. Uh, so re your re recommendation for everyone who's watching now because probably uh, over 25% of them may be affected and... Uh, <laughs> keep patching, definitely keep <laughs> patching, that really makes sense. And if in doubt, in general, whether you are using uh, these Infineon keys or Infineon generated keys, because we found even instances where the keys were used in some completely different hardware, but they were generated with these chips and then transferred to the different hardware. Mm -hmm. And in general, if you want to use the opportunity to figure out uh, how easy it is to determine where your RSA keys come from, then use the services that uh, we provide for free over the net. Link in the description uh, and link to uh, your research as well. Yeah, right? yeah. We'll, we'll, I will then give you the link for the Roca discovery. It's on its own and also for the tool that allows you to check the RSA keys. Great. And these are the guys who help us with the development of Flowmon in direct or indirect way because we cooperate with Masaryk University ever since the beginning uh, and they're experts in cybersecurity and we're very thrilled to, to have you uh, working with us. Perfect. It's a pleasure to work with Flowmon and other industrial partners and we definitely are happy to see both our students uh, being successful in Flowmon and also our university testing and developing advanced features and doing research that contribute directly to Flowmon. Very Wonderful. To see that. Wonderful. Thank you very much for your time, Mashek. And Happy New Year. Thanks a lot. Happy New Year and Merry Christmas to everybody. Thank you.